Welcome to the Iron Optics webinar. My name is Jared Sando, and I'm one of the founders and the head of product development of Iron Optics. And today I'll be talking to you about how our packed emitter column technology is revolutionizing chromatography in the field of proteomics. But before I begin talking about our recent advances of uh, Iron Optics, I'd like to provide a bit of a historical background on the creation of Iron Optics and the core technology, the packed emitter column, for which we're best known for. A number of the founders of Iron Optics come from an academic research background at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute in Melbourne, Australia, which is actually the oldest medical institute in Australia, and where the head of pro the proteomics core facility, Andrew Webb, Giuseppe Infusini, and myself work collaboratively to support cutting edge research within a, a range of laboratories using an array of different techniques, including total and clinical proteomics, PTM analysis, and structural MS techniques such as crosslinking and HDX. As part of this research, we wanted to develop the lab into one of the centers of excellence in the world. And to do that, we realized we had to adopt the most advanced chromatographic techniques used by the leaders in the field, such as Matthias Mann, John Yates, Josh Kuhn. Uh, namely, they were using packed emitter columns. We received the protocols for production of these columns and tried to replicate this ourselves. What we quickly discovered was that we were making columns with a high failure rate and a poor column to column reproducibility and we also learned that this wasn't that unusual. But really unsatisfied with the performance that we were observing, we iterated on the existing protocols to develop a new technique that not only improved the success and robustness of the columns, um, but really kept that high performance that you expect of a packed emitter column. We were using these new columns on our Brooker Impact QTOF, and the app scientists at Brooker in uh, Bremen quickly realized that we're actually achieving results from the instruments that surpassed even their own internal identification numbers. They just had to get their hands on these columns, and so the Odyssey series packed emitter column was developed and used by Brooker. But far more than a customer of this initial product, Brooker have been a really integral development partner for our columns. With the subsequent release of the Timstoff Pro, we optimised our column to work hand in hand with this new technology. At the same time, we also developed a parallel product range to expand our column compatibility uh, to now include the thermo range of mass spectrometers. Uh, however, while the Odyssey column had great performance, being a bare piece of packed fused silica made fitting, the uh, fitting it to instruments and HPLCs time consuming and quite challenging. Uh, but responding to this feedback, we went on to develop several key advances uh, to make this a far more user-friendly item, which became known and released as the Aurora series. Now in the Aurora series, there are three key performance features that give these columns record-breaking performance with plug-and-play usability. The first is the 25 centimeter integrated emitter column. Now this is unchanged from our Odyssey series and provides a true zero dead volume to eliminate peak broadening post column. The next feature is a uh, unique to Iron Optics, and this is the Nano Zero Union. This is a union that can receive a fitting from your HPLC, such as a, a Nano Viper, and can withstand pressures greater than 1200 bar. This fitting uh, is quite unique as a, a unique design where the end of the Nano Viper abuts the start of the column without a bore drilled in between the two, and this results in a true zero dead volume union. The final feature on our Brooker uh, cap spray models is a cap spray adapter pre-fit around the emitter tip, which allows really quick and simple installation into a cap spray housing. And it's these advances that have really lowered the barriers that have traditionally existed for labs adopting packed emitter columns within their own laboratories. We really only need to look at the increasing number of publications coming out from labs uh, that are now using Aurora series columns including publications on recent advances with MaxQuant software, phosphoproteomics studies in Nature, and some of the latest cross-linking MS technologies, and some comprehensive uh, proteomes in, in natural killer cells, really just to name a few. So what comes next? Well, in the last year, we've been focusing on reducing the time taken for proteomic projects, allowing for samples to be analyzed quicker and in greater numbers. And for this, we've released two columns, a 15 centimetre and a 5 centimetre Aurora column. And these are specifically targeted at rapid analysis applications. But why do we need to analyse samples quicker? 
Well, we all perform experiments in our labs that uncover detailed signaling pathways, map out intricate networks, and inform us about human biology. However, traditionally, very little of this immense knowledge is actually translated into the bedside to assist in clinical decisions and improve patient outcomes, which ultimately is why we're all here. So, so why is this? Well, one of the big reasons is that many of the advanced machine learning and deep learning methods that are used for developing these cl clinical tools and classifiers require hundreds to thousands of samples. Now, the good news is that actually many of the disease biobanks that have been established uh, around the world contain large cohorts, uh, the large cohorts that are required for these studies. However, almost fundamentally, current bottom-up proteomic methods are not suitable for high throughput analyses of large sample cohorts. And why is this? Well, because current methodologies focus on long sample acquisition times, 60, 90 minute gradients per sample, plus adding on loading and equilibration overheads. Second, uh, running large amounts of sample quickly often requires specialised and custom L LCMS equipment and the development of in-house software. And finally, most traditional mass spectrometers are hindered by slow duty cycles, meaning that you often had to deliberately widen chromatographic peaks to achieve good quantitation. Now, in the response to these challenges, we work to develop simplified rapid analysis workflows that are available on current LCMS platforms. They don't require complex software solutions or custom-made consumables. We've optimised our column links for maximum performance from short gradients. And as mentioned before, we have two recent additions to the Aurora series, the, the 5 and the 15 centimetre packed emitter columns. We've paired these columns with the Timstoff Pro and thanks to fragmentation rates well beyond 100 hertz, we have an instrument that can keep up with the lightning fast peaks produced by these rapid columns. So just how fast are these columns? Well, if we look at uh, peak widths uh, that we're getting off the columns, if we run a typical 90 minute gradient on our 15 centimetre column, we're seeing peak widths around 10 seconds. Uh, this is across uh, triplicate runs. Now, instead, if we shorten that gradient to a 17 minute gradient, now, using our method, this allows us to run 50 samples per day. We're getting peak widths below four seconds. If we then swap out this column for a five centimetre column, we now run a five minute gradient, and this allows us to run 180 samples per day. We're seeing peak widths around two seconds. So we wanted to benchmark these rapid uh, methods that we uh, developed. And initially we used a, a, the typical standard of most laboratories, a HeLa cell triptych digest. And we processed these samples in two different ways. We used a, a stage tip high pH fractionation method where we created a 12 fraction high pH library. And we also ran these samples in a, in a single shot analysis uh, using a DDA workflow. Both of these will run on the Timstoff Pro using the passive acquisition mode. Uh, following acquisition, we analysed using MaxQuant and matched uh, between runs from the fractions to the single shot uh, samples and within the single shot samples using the, the 4D match between runs algorithm in MaxQuant. So what do the results look like? Well, they were pretty impressive. So if we look at our 17 minute gradient, so this is running a 50 samples per day method on our 15 centimetre column, we're able to see 6,000 proteins per sample 50 times per day. And you can see cumulatively, we're seeing over 7,000 proteins from these samples. And this doesn't come at the expense of quantitation. We're getting a mean correlation in a Pearson correlation plot of 0.95 between all of these samples. So really tight quant. Now, what if we wanna go really fast? So this is running our five minute gradient on the five centimeter column. Using this gradient, we can run up to 180 samples per day. And if we look at what we can see from these uh, HeLa triptych cell digests, we're seeing around 3,600 proteins per sample in a five minute gradient. And you can see we're, we're seeing a more than 4,600 proteins cumulatively across all the runs. And again, this doesn't come at the expense of quantitation, a mean correlation of 0.95. So while we're all very impressed by the performance of columns on protein standards, how do they really perform using samples that we're likely to see during clinical research? For us, like many labs, the sample of choice for clinical projects is blood plasma. 
and it's known to be a really source, a rich source of biomarkers across a range of diseases. And for our work, we only require a really small sample volume, just one microliter. So if we analyze neat plasma, so this is plasma that hasn't gone through a depletion process, we observe around 240 plasma proteins per run using our five minute gradient on the five centimeter column and cumulatively 293 proteins across all of the runs. Now this is 180 samples per day. In one day we've analyzed this number of samples. And these identifications have also achieved a great correlation as we saw before, 0.975 which is well within the constraints required for applications such as clinical biomarker discovery and diagnostics. So to summarize, we've developed columns that can be used in simplified rapid analysis workflows on available LC and MS technologies. These workflows don't require custom and complex software solutions or custom made consumables. As an example of the power of these workflows, I always like to show that, that we've got three Timstoff pros in our laboratory. If we ran these on our five minute gradients using the five centimeter Aurora series column, we could analyze greater than 180,000 samples per year. And this is well within the requirements of modern clinical uh, projects. In fact, you could probably run several projects per year on this. If you're interested in finding out uh, more information on these workflows, We've actually published uh, the details in a bioarchive ma manuscript that's available now. And so that's where we're up to at this point. We've made some incredible advances over the last few years and have seen the fruits of our labour begin to really pay off with an increasing number of discoveries made using our technology. We're a company with a firm focus on the future, so watch this space to hear about the, what developments are to come next. And finally, if you're interested in hearing more about our technology or our journey, please visit our website. We also have information and sales details available by email, and we're active on Twitter and LinkedIn if those are your preferred platforms. Now, finally, thanks for your attention today.